Good evening and welcome to Covenant's uh, Reflection on the Rock on this Friday, October 22nd. And we uh, gather in this time of uh, reflection in this, this carved out sacred space to reflect on portions of Hebrews. Uh, chapter 7, verses 23 to 28, if you want to pause it and go grab your Bible. Um, because this is kind of, it gets kind of deep. Mm. And um, so we're going to not lighten it up, but we're going to maybe <laughs> apply it to something we can all relate to. Maybe that would be a better way yeah, of saying good. it. Good. So we begin, um, you know, it's where we place our hope, and we place our hope on the solid rock. pray. God of amazing power to strengthen the weak, provide hope for the hopeless, free the chained to trust the one most perfect love. Mm. Surround us now with your grace. Mm. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 7, starting at verse 23. There were many priests under the old system, for death prevented them for, from remaining in office. But because Jesus lives forever, his priesthood lasts forever. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. He is the kind of high priest we need because he is holy and blameless, unstained by sin. He has been set apart from sinners mm. and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. Unlike those other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. They did this for their own sins first and then for the sins of the people. But Jesus did this once, once and for all, when he offered himself as the sacrifice for the people's sins. The law appointed high priests who were limited by human weakness. But after the law was given, God appointed the Son with an oath, and his son has been made the perfect high priest forever. Hmm. You know, it's kind of like a broken record. Mm -hmm. It feels like we just read this we last did, yes. week. And the week before. And the week before. Mm -hmm. But at, what I'm coming to terms with Hebrews is that uh, it's deeply theological. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we really want to study some of the foundational doctrines of the church and of, of the lordship of Jesus Christ, you would read these various portions of, um, of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. It is full of God talk through Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, now, while we don't necessarily, we've established that we don't necessarily understood this whole priest, high priest thing because we didn't grow up Jewish, um, we can extract from this reading, some very uh, foundational theological understandings about Christ, the divine Christ. Number one, Jesus lives forever. Hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. lives forever. Jesus intercedes with God on our behalf. Mm -hmm. And Jesus sacrificed his love, his life for love once and for all. Mm -hmm. So you take the, extract those foundational theological um, beliefs. Yeah, and that's about, what we need to know rather than the yeah, priesthood history. Yeah, exactly. And so theology and doctrine are all well and good, um, but you know, what does that do for us right here now? 
Uh, and I go back to last week when I quoted um, a saying by Frederick Buchner um, regarding this idea of sacrifice. And he said, to sacrifice something is to make it holy by giving it away um, for love. For love, yeah. And I think that's the heart of the Hebrews message. Mm -hmm. It encompasses this quote, um, how Jesus sacrificed himself, making his life holy, holy. by for giving love. it away for In love. love. Yeah. yeah. And for love. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's a huge sentence. I mean, it, you think and you reflect on that, and it's mind-boggling in a way. Um, I, and I can see why it keeps theologians busy. Yeah. <laughs> Just chewing on that, that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but here's my take on that, and there must be somebody driving by. I don't well, know. Well, I what think the, the base outside on. with a base, <laughs> the the base, base going, because the whole glass. building is kind of... <laughs> but maybe it's the Holy Spirit, you know? Yeah. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that or not. But anyway, so here's my... Here's my take on um, how we would apply that, that saying by giving something away for love, the sacrifice. So a few years ago, we were doing a series of um, sermons on, for stewardship, and the last one was on sacrifice. And the children's message was I, I had gotten, it was just before Halloween, and I had gotten this big bowl and filled it with the mini packages of M&Ms. Oh, uh-huh. And um, it's my favorite candy. And so I was telling much the hint, kids. Hint. Hint, <laughs> so I was telling the kids how much I loved M and M's. Oh my gosh, I loved M and M's. Um, but I also knew that if I didn't share them, Jesus wouldn't be very proud of me. Mm -hmm. And so I took one package of the M and M's and opened it, and I gave each child one M and M. <laughs> <laughs> And then I sat down and go, wow, I feel just so much better because I was going to feel kind of guilty if I hadn't shared those, <laughs> those M&Ms. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and sharing them, you know, kind of made me feel better. And, and um, I didn't feel so guilty. And you still had a lot of m and I still yourself. had a lot <laughs> left over. Um, so then I asked them if they knew what the meaning of sacrifice was. And, and one, one kid... He, she said, it's when you give away something that you'd really rather keep for yourself. <laughs> Whoa, I know. That's right. Out of the mouths of babes. And I, I said, yes. I mean, typically, our typical understanding of sacrifice mm -hmm. is that giving it away um, hurts. Mm. And, but as with pretty much everything else that Jesus turns Cops. upside down, <laughs> yep. um, he turns that understanding of sacrifice upside down. Mm -hmm. And so then I told the children that as much as I loved M&M's, I loved them more. And then I gave them each their own package of M&M's, and I had plenty of leftover to share with the congregation. And giving away those M&M's was a holy act of love. Mm. Um, I loved M&M's, even though they wouldn't have done me a bit of good. <laughs> Eating but them all myself, but I, I would always know I would never want for M&Ms. Mm -hmm. And so this, this Hebrews is trying to explain this in terms that a Jewish person would understand, and hence the, the priest, the priesthood. Um, Jesus becomes this eternally living intercessor who brings heaven to earth um, for each one of us. And, and I, so then our giving becomes holy and loving exactly. and feels good. Yes. Ah. Yes. So then I was thinking, you know, here's this mind-boggling kind of idea about sacrifice. And I, I thought back to, actually it was a children's message that Ann Nelson did one time about how God knows um, every hair on your head. And, and I thought about the grains of sand in the desert. Mm the hairs on her head, the stars in the sky. Mm, and uncountable. God loves each and every <sighs> one of us more. And so it just, keeps, it just keeps laying on top of layer, and you're just uh, kind of like, wow. God loves us more. Grace abounds. Sins are forgiven. Hope is restored. 
relationships are reconciled. I mean, it's What's all... not to feel good about it? Exactly. God has taste and see. Taste and see that, that God, God is good. good. So death is no longer the end, and it's, it's only fitting now that after this mind-boggling realization, well, of course death wouldn't be the end because the love is too great. Right. Um, so, and, you know, it's always nice to know that, you know, God satisfies the most hungry, um, frees the captive, um, mm -hmm. saves the most imperfect. Mm -hmm. And Jesus sympathizes with us in our weakness uh, for M&Ms. <laughs> and uh, Jesus knows our struggles and our challenges, our desires to keep M&Ms for ourselves. And, um, you know, so we trust this Jesus without a single blemish, um, no weakness that would cause him to turn his back on us. Mm. Um, not to hoard God's love for himself. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus is our friend. It's a very common way of, you know, identifying Jesus and warming up to Jesus as friend. Uh, but friends challenge mm -hmm. um, and support. Uh, friends are honest and faithful and comforting. So one commentator said, as if to sum it all up, says, as great and wonderful as Jesus is, it is all the more remarkable that Jesus is God's gift to us. Oh. It's yeah. just like God picked up a tiny grain of sand and plucked a hair out of our head and dedicated a star to us and says, this is where it gets spooky about on Wednesday, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will show you rest. Mm. So the theologians can have all uh, their yeah. doctrine and everything, and I'll take M&Ms. And, and, <laughs> and God's rest. And God's rest. Yeah. Exactly. So, to be that loved. Oh, my what? gosh. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's my kind of priest. Yeah. You know, I, I just... The more I thought about it, and the more that, the, like I said, it layered, and I was like, wow, that's, no wonder I love my job. <laughs> so, amen. Amen. <laughs> and this Jesus, the friend, um, in, our, in our prayer hymn is the gentle shepherd, oh. um, who lovingly uh, leads us and feeds us. So the feeding comes in yet yes. again with the hungry and the, um, we're all hungering for various kinds of things. So gentle shepherd, come and lead us. Yeah.
and you gave us strength. Thank you. But there are many, and even some of us, who are sometimes led astray by other shepherds of power and greed or addiction or desperation, by inequity and poverty and dangers all around them, both at home and around the globe. Show us how to and lead us into it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, Sunday. Sunday, yes. Well, okay, thank you, by the way, for preaching Sunday. It was my pleasure. It was excellent. Um, so we're going to kind of continue on. We're in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52, and we're getting closer and closer to Jerusalem. Um, Jesus kind of makes a quick mad dash in and out of Jericho, and on his way out uh, has an encounter with a blind man and mm -hmm. asks him a question. What do you want Christ, what do you want me to do for you? And Which is what he asked James and John exactly. last week. It's yes. So, you know, if Jesus is asking them that question, mm, mm. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to look okay. at that on Sunday. Great. Our closing um, song is um, the, the newer version of Amazing Grace, um, Tomlin, Chris Tomlin. Um, amazing grace, my chains are gone. And I, and I think about the freedom in oh, these yeah. mind-boggling revelations about, you know, who Jesus is to us and that no matter what, God loves us more. And, mm. and when you really sink into that truth, it is so freeing. You end up beaming just mm. from, you know, the, yeah. the revelation of it. So, as we go forth into this evening, into this night's rest, uh, be rest assured that through God's amazing grace, our chains are gone. Mm. Amen. <laughs>
good evening. Good, good night. night.